welcome to another episode of the Kick and Cover podcast. Uh, today we have Mike Jones with us. Uh, he is the linebacker and special teams coordinator at North Central High School in South Carolina. Coach, how are you? I'm good. How are you, man? I'm doing good. And, and so people can kind of know where North Central is, and we were talking a little bit before. Uh, you said, what, about an hour from Charlotte, is that right? Yeah, about an hour from Charlotte, uh, about 30 minutes from Columbia, uh, kind of in between, uh, you know, kind of in between there. Um, the town that's really close to us is, is uh, Kershaw. Uh, Camden's also in our county. So it's kind of a small area, small school. We're uh, 500 students, and so uh, so it's kind of a smaller school, one of the smallest ones in our district. So. Okay. How did you, um, just out of curiosity for people who want to get to know you, um, what's, what's kind of your background? How did you end up at North Central High? Yeah, so I'm a graduate of North Central, uh, graduated in 2006, um, actually uh, graduated, played football in high school, played baseball, uh, went to Brevard College after uh, graduation, played, uh, played baseball there, uh, played golf as well, and then uh, got out um, and uh did some different things. Um, I'm a business major as well. So I was able to uh, kind of help uh, start a business. And then uh, four years ago, uh, we got a new head coach, um, kind of approached him and just said, Hey, I'd like to volunteer. And by the end of the first spring practice, I was uh, kind of, I guess, assistant linebacker coach, special teams coordinator. And in 2017, I just finished our fourth, my fourth year there. So um, so that's kind of kind of how I got started and and uh, and, and kind of where I've been. Okay, um, and then for for uh, people listening uh, today, we're going to talk kick return. Uh, me and Coach kind of went back on a couple topics and um, always trying to learn about kick return. Um, I, I, I kick return. I just kick return is just so tough in high school. It's just I mean usually it's a combination of depth issues, time. Um, who you can and can't put on there. It, 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 it's a combination of, and it, let's be honest, the other thing is we, we don't see what colleges see 90% of the time, a deep kick that's either going to go in the end zone or go down to the five. We're seeing, yeah. oh, it's the 30, it's the 18, it's to, it's everywhere. So, like, I appreciate you coming on and talking it, Coach. Yeah. 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 It's, um, we see, we see that as well. You know, everything's game plan, but you know, I, I kind of, um, I set up a, a return, like if we're going to get the ball, you know, get a deep kick and kind of start from there. But, you know, we, we just, um, you know, uh, like you said, you, you might get the, the squib kicks and the pooch kicks and stuff like that. And, and, um, and so it makes it a little tough to kind of keep everybody engaged because they're like, well, you know, but it's an important, it's a, it's a, uh, important team. You know, as a special teams coordinator, I'm sure you agree that all yeah. of them are important. But you know, um, but it's very, um, it can change a game, kickoff return, if you don't understand the rules and don't understand, uh, you know, uh, possession and having possession and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, um, so it's it's something that we focus on. It's something that that I'm, I'm very uh, take a lot of pride in and, and try to try to put the kids in the best situation possible. So. All right, Coach. Well, I'm going to let you get started, and kind of like I've done the past couple episodes, I'll kind of just chime in with my bad jokes or questions as we go. Yeah. Um, so, again, thank you for having me today. Um, uh, there's my contact information, uh, Twitter, email, that sort of thing. Um, if you reach out, I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions if you have anything at the end. So, um, kind, of, uh, kind of go over our standards uh, real quick, and I kind of uh, mentioned it, but um, you know, we're, we're hundred percent possession, um, you know, hundred uh, percent penalty free. And if we can get the, uh, average, uh, drive to start past the 30, um, you know, we do those things. We're setting our offense up to be successful. Um, we're setting them up, um, with an opportunity. And, and so, uh, so that's where we start, uh, day one, kind of letting everybody know where, where we want to be and what we want to do. All right. Our overview. Um, so this is setting up the team. Uh, this is what I'm going to tell the kids, coaches, whenever we start talking about it, uh, you know, in the summer, we don't do much in the spring, but in the summer, uh, when we start talking about kickoff return, uh, this is kind of stuff I'm going to go over. So our alignment, 
Uh, we're 5-2, 1-2-1, uh, one, one, uh, kind of a diamond, I guess you could refer to it. And I'll show it here in a second so uh, so you kind of better understand it. But we've been in this uh, kind of alignment since I got there in 2017. Uh, kind of what, what we were just meant, uh, saying, you know, you, you can't guarantee it's a deep kick every time. So you have to protect the holes. And and this is um, giving us the best chance to do that again. So um, our assignment, we're, we're man to man blocking. Uh, we started this two years ago. Um, I felt like it was easier for kids, you know, trying to tell them, hey, you're going to sprint back 20 yards and you're going to get hit to hit with this guy and you're going to block this guy that's done, it's gotten 30 yard head start on you or whatever. I just didn't, I didn't see it being very successful for us. I mean, it just wasn't uh, something that we were um, particularly good at. You couldn't really uh, spend a lot of time at it. Um, it's not like, you know, being at a school of 500, you know, you get out, you, you, you can't keep them forever. You can't, first of all, you can't get them out there early enough because there's not a bunch of extras to really work on stuff. And then you can't keep them out there, you know, because they've gone both ways, all practice and, you know, run scout team and they might've been on the first team. So, so we went to man to man blocking and it just something that I could teach a lot easier uh, and quicker and, and, and everybody could kind of understand it. So, um, and then we, our base call is a middle return. Um, and then we can obviously make adjustments. We can go to a sideline or add a reverse to it or so forth. So personnel, and we kind of mentioned this, this is something that, uh, I look at, you know, um, you can't have a certain people on there, but you know, whenever I'm starting to fill these positions, I start looking at, at who I have and who's available. So my front line, uh, my tackles, uh, you know, I'm looking for that tight end linebacker body, but, uh, it's kind of a, uh, a, a good hips, good movement. Um, you know, typically it's like an outside linebacker, somebody who can move or a tight end that somebody, you know, a bigger kid, but, but it can still move a little bit. My guards, uh, these are my physical DBs, man. These are guys that are quick, can, ain't afraid to hit anybody, ain't afraid to block somebody. You know, um, these are my, my, my fastest physical guys. Um, and then my center is going to be a, a baseball player. Um, I've used. DBs to Olel. My, my my center this past uh, year was actually the center for the team. He but he's a first baseman on the baseball team, and he did a really good job of you know kind of protecting that that middle for us. Could move uh, good enough to and, and catch a bouncing ball. So so the um so those are my you know my front line guys. Baseball we, players coach seem to be some of the, like best for kick return and anybody who going to put it back for punt return from my experience. Like literally yeah, the, be yeah. the best punt returner I've ever had also played baseball. He he, he fielded yeah. every ball that he got. Yeah, I, uh, you know that's that's kind of what I look at. You know, you can't always put them back there because they're not the most athletic with with like punt return and stuff. But you know, I, um, if I need somebody to catch the ball, a lot of times I feel comfortable with a, with a baseball yeah. player. Um, and then, like I said, just that that baseball type that somebody who knows how to field a ground ball at that center position, that anchor kind of in the middle. So uh, my wings are kind of my uh, best ball skill kids. These are my basketball players, uh, kids that know how to catch. Because, again, we got to protect for the pooch, right, or, or, you know, something like that. We're going to put them in a situation to be successful, uh, put them in a position to be successful. So to, to do that, you know, I'm going to get uh, kids that maybe they aren't the best returners. They're not going to they're not going to be return guy type kids. But they're going to be kids that can go and high point the ball, you know, if it's a, a bouncing ball or uh, can, can can catch a ball that's in the air. So uh, basketball players typically are baseball players. You know, those are my, my two looks. So uh, my point, this is kind of, I call it point because it's point of my diamond. Um, you'll see it here in a second. But this is my most physical kid. Again, he... He might uh, he's, he might have to handle the ball every once in a while, but most of the time if I tell him if he's getting a ball kicked to him, fair catch it. Uh, if it's on the ground and it's not going to go past you, jump on it. You know, those are the two rules I give him yeah. if the ball comes at him. Other than that, I want him to be the most physical kid. You know, I want him to, to be ready to hammer somebody. Um, and this might be our, you know, the biggest block, you know, that we have, you know. Um, and he doesn't even have to move. He's, he's letting the guy come to him pretty much, so. Um, and then our halfbacks and returners, obviously, this is our skill, skill kids. Um, biggest attribute I look for, uh, you know, I want kind of that running back type is, uh, is somebody who can read blocks um, because of the way we try to set up the return. 
Um, I want uh, I want kids that that know what they're they're doing um, with the ball in their hands. So uh, so you know again looking for that a kid who understands reading blocks. It's not about you know we all want to draw it up where you know the, it splits open wide open and the kid don't get touched and can run it right down in the middle, but it don't work that way. So uh, I haven't seen it that way anyway. You know. Yeah. Uh, and then, like, I, I just want to highlight, like, these guards, man, this is probably our most important position um, just because it's a physical position. If this kid isn't isn't going to give you effort, if it, is, if it isn't a kid that you can trust it's going to be physical, uh, you're going to be in trouble trying to run, um, trying to kind of run this, uh, this concept. So uh, install, um, believe it or not, you teach the rules, uh, you know, don't assume anything. You know, you might have kids that's been in your program a couple of years uh, and they're like, might roll their eyes at like, okay, coach, yeah, we know it's a live ball after 10 yards. Um, the kid you <laughs> don't say that to is the kid that the ball is going to be kicked to to start the season. Uh, yeah. And I've seen this in from personal experience. Like the kids, you're like, oh, yeah, he'll be fine. You know, I'm going to have to worry about him. Ball gets kicked to him and he doesn't understand the rules of kickoff return. And everybody's looking around like, what just happened? So, so again, you know, teach the rules, understand it. You know, you want everybody on the same page, man. You know, that's the communication and that sort of thing. So teaching the rules and the install is very important. Now, um, as we start to talk about it, you know, um, we always count uh, the kickoff team uh, left to right, one to 10. We exclude the kicker. Um, and uh, everybody on the return team has a, has a number. They have an assignment. And uh, that assignment typically won't change depending, you know, depending on the uh, alignment of the opponent. So if it's five and five, four and six to the left, you know, four to the left, six to the right, or four to the right, six to the left, it usually won't change. I can give them a number and that can be it for the year. So, um, so this is kind of what we have here, you know, and you can kind of see it. It's um, we just number it off and, and makes it very easy. Everybody can count one to 10 left to right, exclude the kicker. You know, and everybody knows their number. So, all right. So, talking about this is uh, you know our five two one two one look uh, diamond look. Um, this is kind of where we want to be. Um, this is our base alignment stuff. So, uh, so you'll see it. Um, it'll be uh, that front line obviously be on the fifty. Center is game plan. You know, depending on uh, the left right kicker. Um, you know, uh, we'll put him in a certain way or. Uh, if we can expect something or whatever. Um, but <clears throat> everybody uh, should be in a staggered stance, outside foot up. So kind of turned inside a little bit, getting ready to kind of drop once the ball is kicked. Um, obviously, they're not turned uh, 90 degrees to the 50, but, you know, athletic, staggered stance, you know, that sort of thing. Um, wings are going to be one yard inside of the number, staggered inside foot uh, on the 35. So again, kind of that staggered look, um, prepare for the ball to come to them, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and just in an athletic position, my point guy, he's again, he's my most physical guy. He's middle of the field, square stance, uh, toes on the 25 yard line. Um, halfbacks are going to be between the hash and the numbers, um, you know, 15 yard line, uh, square to stagger stance. I, I let the athlete kind of choose. But, you know, I, I'm um, – and, again, it all kind of changes, but just that's kind of the base alignment. And then, obviously, the returner, middle of the field. Uh, this is my best return guy, um, and it's going to be a square stance. Uh, so, you know, we're uh, – you know, that, that's kind of where we start day one with hey, our alignment. Coach, so, do you find that your point guy tends to be your biggest adjuster in terms of alignment as the season goes on? Um, I, I would say that in my wings. Okay. Um, depending on the team, you know, if it's a if it's a deep kicking team, I'll back them up the wings a little bit just to kind of give them a better angle, better leverage on their on their blocking. Um, but yeah, the, that that wings and point guy are going to be my biggest adjusters because, you know, <clears throat> I kind of need to put them in positions to, to yeah. help us out. You know, I can't just put them in a stagger set. So, um, and then obviously if it's a, you know, everything's game planned. Um, you know, obviously can move that H and returner up 
uh, if it's a team that doesn't kick in deep and so forth. Uh, sometimes you'll see us, uh, we'll have all those three of those H and returners. Well, they'll be, um, they'll be in uh, pretty much a straight line. They won't even look like, they won't even look like a diamond, but it just depends on what we got, you know, that week or so. All right, so assignment. So this is the, the, the man on man blocking. This is, um, and it, it's going to look crazy here. Um, but I'm gonna go over everything and kind of, um, but this is kind of the draw up. This is what I show all the kids, coaches, whenever we get started. So front line, left to right, um, our left tackle, he's going to have number one, um, left guard is going to have seven. Our center is going to have six right guard, four and right tackle 10. Now, <clears throat> if you look at it, you know, they're, they're in, a the one, the left, the tackles are, are in good position to start with. They have inside leverage already, so they should be uh, should be able to get inside of their their guy. Um, if you look now, the the guards, those are you can see they got across the field. They got the hardest job. They got to be speedsters. Again, we're looking at a DB type kid that can fit, be physical. Um, you know, can track, can get inside of their guy, and and and, and not be afraid of contact. So. So um, that's why I say those are the most important. If you don't have those guys, you can't you can't do this because they're just not going to be able to you know, be be somebody you can count on. Wings are going to have two and nine. Um, again, they they're they're going to have to work to get inside, but they have a they have a head start. You know, they know they they got what twenty yard head start to get inside. Um, you know, we're, we we play a lot of teams that are down your lane, straight down your lane type teams, um, and so. You know, watching film, they'll know, hey, stay down the line, stay down, you know, get inside the line, get inside the guy, and so forth. So, so again, we got that those first uh, that first line with the wings, you know, um, covering up that the uh, that outside, kind of getting those guys pushed. Um, and then point's going to have five. That's uh, usually the first guy to the left of left or right of the kicker, depending on their their alignment. But you know, we're we're you see, he don't move much. You know that point guy. He's he's a point person for a reason. He's a because this kid's gonna have, uh, come down he, uh, down the field full speed, and he's just got to be able to stand in there and get inside of him. You know, be physical <clears throat> and take it on head on. You know, um, I guess the old wedge. You know, he was. You know, he'd be the he'd be the anchor. You know, he he'd be the guy everybody would be dropping to. So so again, you know, that body type might not change. Uh, that mentality might not change, but. You know, it's a kid that I, uh, that you got to trust is not going to olay a block, you know, or, 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 you know, look to miss contact. So, um, halfback's got three and eight. And then returner, if returner doesn't get the ball, I tell him, you know, you check three and eight, you know, um, but if we're so fast and we're going to run by them, you get up in there and you leave block. You know, that's kind of my thing. You should, don't just stand around and watch, um, you know, that's easier said than done. You know, they're like, wait a minute, you know, why am I going to run up in there? You know what I mean? That everybody's taking, you know, so, so you're just trying to get them to understand that. So, um, all right. So, uh, our progression, this is, uh, you know, all this stuff's good. Uh, in theory, everybody looks good. This whole, you know, you draw it up on the board. Everybody understands what they got, but you got to be able to, to progress to the field and you got to be able to get people, um, understanding where they're going so uh so kind of what we do um first we got to teach the, the blocking technique uh what we're looking for again we're not a we're not a wedge team we don't drop to a spot turn around and get back up field you know i'm i want them to get inside i want them to get uh in that inside hip i want them to stay in between their assignment and the ball uh you know we use the the goal post if it's a middle return get 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 your back pointing towards the goal post, you get inside of your, your assignment. And so we, we, we teach that to everybody. Um, and then we run some half line stuff, you know, uh, where, you know, you can kind of break it down. Uh, the combination, obviously that front line with the guard center, you know, uh, point, all that, that can get kind of muddy. So you want to make sure everybody's clear and understand where they have to go, how they're going to set up their blocks. Um, and then, you know, with their dot with the diamond as well, you know, um, with H, if the H were fielded, if that returner, you know, replacing, 
um, picking up any trash in the middle if he has to, that sort of thing. Even with the H's, you know, uh, I tell them, yeah, you got three and eight, but if three and eight aren't going to make it down the field and you see somebody in the middle and we're trying to run it, you got to pick them up. So, you know, you have the biggest adjuster in the play because three and eight might not be getting down there. They might've got picked up by the wrong person. So you got to pick somebody up. You know, you can't just stand there and look. So working that, um, teaching, understanding, you know, that sort of thing. And then our first 11 on 11 real, really work is, uh, kind of the fit drill. It's something I started, uh, about halfway through this year. Uh, and it really helped, uh, as we got a little later on in the year, I think kids understood a little bit more what they, where they were supposed to be going and how they were supposed to get there. Um, cause now you got 11 on 11. They're like, oh, okay, I see how it all develops. I see how it all works. And then <clears throat> we don't do this a ton, but live reps, man, preseason, we don't, our preseason games, uh, our scrimmages, we don't do a whole lot of live stuff, you know, in those, uh, coaches aren't prepared or whatever. I'm like, let's, let's get it. Cause I want to see what I got, you know? So, so we've been, we were fortunate enough this year to, to be able to do some live reps. I'm able to work my kickoff team in that as well. Uh, it isn't necessarily my first, you know, kickoff return team, uh, yeah. out there, but it's kids that's going to have to play, you know, um, being at a small school again, kid gets tired, from, you know, he runs a 70 yard touchdown or, Excuse me, he runs, uh, he's out there on defense the whole time. And, you know, he's on a long drive. <clears throat> he turns around. I got to tell, I can't tell him to go back out there on, on kickoff return, you know. So, um, you know, it's kind of tough. So everybody has to be prepared to play. So um, now, blocking now, technique. coach, now, on that, yeah. how many yep. coaches do you, do you ha- how do you break up coaching assignments on that? Um, is it just you, or do you have like coaching set from the front five? This coach front charge of this area. How does that work in yeah. practice? Yeah. So my first couple of years, it was all me <laughs> on all the teams. Um, you know, uh, uh, we've been we've been better as a staff uh, to to kind of take charge a little bit. Uh, so I split it up front half. Uh, front line is is one coach. Then I use my wings and point guy that's a coach and then i use a coach for my returners and and h um so so you know we got we got a little everybody's got a little group there everybody kind of you know and then um and then i oversee it all so i guess there's five really four coaches really you know should have eyes on everything um and kind of see how things are uh so so it hasn't been bad we did that uh last this year, I know, in the last year, I think, and it, it helped out. Um, again, you got more eyes on it. You can kind of see what what's supposed to, where kids are supposed to be, and you know, it just worked out better. So, um, but yeah, we, we had some good, some some uh, some groups and being able to kind of okay. work some guys in and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> as our blocking technique, everybody again learns how to do this that's going to be on it. Um, it's just, uh, uh, it's just an easy way to, to set it up. It's an easy way to teach it. Um, and, and we teach inside hip and then, uh, kind of, a, I call it ride technique, but kind of like those gunners, you know, on, on punt, uh, punt return, they get inside and they just kind of stay inside. You know, you're trying to get, you're not looking for a big block. You're not turning around and blocking this guy up the field. You're using his momentum. His momentum is trying, he's trying to run down the field. Why don't you just, use it right get inside get your hands on all you got to do is extend your hands or get your hands on and and just really force this guy to stay up the field because if he stays up the field stays outside and keeps running and he's thinking oh i'm winning you know i'm i'm running down the field full speed the guy ain't really touching me i got this thing beat and if he's staying full speed and you know you stay in good position stay in phase you know you can kind of keep this kid um really out from making the play you know, if, if it's a good ball to our returner and he can really make, see the, see the, the play develop and understand where he's supposed to go. Um, so, um, again, we want to force this, the kickoff team outside and then a point of emphasis again, kids, kids, we know everything, right? We, 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 we can draw it up and we can, I'm smart and I understand a lot of football and I love what I do and I'm gonna watch and learn and, and well, you know, 
it ain't like that for these kids, man. They just don't, they ain't going to sit there and watch a ton of film. They ain't going to sit there and watch a lot of football, you know, um, and, and understand special teams to, a, under, you know, all the stuff you may know as a coach. So I, I have to break it down and be like, you know, basic understanding, get your back to the goal post in between your assignment. We want to run it off your back. You know, and when I start saying when I when I started kind of under coaching like that, where I'm not throwing out a lot of words and a lot of different terms and stuff, and I just break it down basic understanding. We were much better um, on special teams. You know, I knew everything, and I and I and I wanted to teach it, and I wanted to put all this stuff in. But whenever I started doing these things right here and just talking to them, like, hey, the whole idea is get your back facing the goalpost, get between your assignments let us run it off your back we were much better so um <clears throat> kind of the drill that we set up though so the kick return team would be you know um yeah kind of the the white circle the black circle would be the kickoff team you know we'll work both of them uh, the left one there is going to be he's going to get have to get inside of that guy so he's got to get inside track that uh inside hip and then force this guy outside and the other side, he's a, he's already got leverage. He's already got inside leverage. So he's really, he may not drop as deep. He's just trying to get, uh, match his speed, the kickoff returners, uh, kickoff team speed. And then he's going to get inside and can again, continue to, uh, keep that guy, force that guy outside. Um, and, they, and like I said, <clears throat> the kickoff team might feel like they're winning because they're technically inside their, 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 they're kind of on their lane or they feel like, Hey, I'm on my lane, that sort of thing. And, and uh all you're doing is just getting in between them you know um and and staying in, and staying inside so so that's kind of the setup we'll go both ways there uh and we'll just kind of um work it drill it you know uh you know we don't as special teams you don't get a ton of time but <clears throat> how much time do you the, normally get coach uh i get about 20 minutes a day okay so um you know but <clears throat> in the preseason I, I'm a big, you know, I'm like, hey, we need to get this in. Or, you know, we need to work on this. We need to do this. So I get a little bit more time in the preseason. Yeah. I may get 35 minutes. Okay. Um, and yeah. I'll, I'll drill some stuff and, and put some stuff in. And, you know, um, this is whenever I'm teaching. Best way, best time for me to teach. Uh, we may do things like if I get 20 minutes in season, I may do it. And we were, we were bad at getting inside on kickoff return. We may take the first five minutes and drill, drill inside hip and ride technique, you know, and just get inside, get inside, get inside, match the speed of the kickoff team, you know, whatever it may be. And now, you know, we may run the fit drill that I'm going to go over here in a second. And, you know, that might be it. You know, if there's anything different for the kickoff team that we're going to see that week, we may put that in or, or make adjustments for that. But, you know, <clears throat> I try to maximize my time the best I can. I don't want it to be a whole lot of standing around to try to get everybody involved, try to keep everybody moving. Uh, Cause you know, my yeah. first couple of years, you know, first being in coaching, take on the role of a uh, special teams coordinator. And then you just have a lot of people standing around except for the 11 people that are on the field. And, you know, then you call on somebody to go out and play on the kickoff turn team. And they're like, I don't know what, what to do, you know? So, <laughs> trying to keep everybody involved, trying to keep everybody understanding the uh, scheme and concept is a big deal to me. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to break it down where we're not just running down the field or yeah, just doing meaningless, you know, reps, you know? So, uh, <clears throat> our half line stuff. Now this is uh this, again, this is a big point um, where we dro work on our drops landmarks. Uh, remember to go and, and to get inside leverage, but you know, understand it we don't i don't give them a landmark i don't say hey you got to drop 10 yards and then get your hands on somebody i give them their number i tell them hey you got to get inside leverage of this guy um and how are you going to do it you know we go over how are you going to get there well it ain't dropping straight back if you got to get inside if he's on if he's inside of you already you can't just drop straight back and kind of make this big circle and think you're going to get inside of this guy you got to make a a beeline to the inside, get across his face, and then set up, turn your hips, and then ride this guy outside. So we go over this stuff, uh, work on landmarks. My coaches uh, that are helping, they usually do a pretty good job of this. 
they understand what we're trying to do. So they're able to sit there and, hey, when you're dropping, you got to understand where you're going and how you're going to get there and so forth. Um, <clears throat> again, I, I kind of pointed it. Uh, my biggest combination, though, is that center guard guard point guy, you know, because it's going to get kind of messy in there if people don't pick up people. And so, <clears throat> you know, I got to get them to where they understand how they cross, how to track the hip, who you have, you know, all these things. And so I'm, I'm, I'm working that group probably or focused on that group more than anybody because I got to see that the kids that we have are going to be able to do the job and that they understand how to get inside. Um, so, so I work that combination and this is kind of a, a picture draw up here of what, what we're trying to do. <clears throat> um, and, and I kind of have lines there, but those lines are really meaningless. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Again, it, there is no landmark. It is about getting inside or staying inside or getting in the hip pocket of somebody. Um, and so, uh, so we're we're uh, we're trying our best uh, to teach that and understand that. And uh, so, other combos we use uh, tackle, far guard, wing, uh, wing H point, uh, returner replacing. Uh, taking the place of an H, you know, those things. And you just try to break it down, segment it all together, try to get everybody to understand where they're going. Uh, I keep saying that, but it's important. And it's like, if you don't know where you're going, it, you can have the best scheme. If the kids don't know where they're going, man, you just hope you hold on to the football. You know what I mean? So it's like, you gotta, you gotta uh, teach the kids, understand where they're going, have confidence that they know where they're going. And then they gotta be able to see, okay, when I go here, it's, it's going to open up what we're trying to do. You know, we're going to be able to figure out or we're going to be able to make a play or, you know, set up our offense, you know. All right, so <clears throat> fit drill. Our fit drill, this is a uh, – man, this is – I found this thing, and this has uh, been been a, a big thing to help my 11-on-11, 11 11, um, being able to, to get kids in a controlled environment, but they also can understand it. We can go from walk-through speed to full speed. Um, and build up and it also cuts down on my full field sprints you know when you got guys down there and you keep going all right blow the whistle we're gonna kick it off and it's a full 11 on 11 full speed whatever you know it, it just uh everybody gets tired you know we don't have that rotation where we got three teams two teams and we just keep fresh bodies so how we set this up is uh again it cuts down on full field sprints but i can, can teach uh, 11 on 11 in a controlled environment uh simulates pretty much the start of this drill stimulates where where you should be after the ball is kicked typically about five yards <clears throat> you know back of where you started um so kickoff team will be lined up five yards closer or five yards away from our front line our front line sh should be at their five yard landmark so um so we've talked about landmarks again i don't give them a landmark but they know hey at five yards i need to be here if this is the guy i'm blocking so we get them in that position they've turned their hips they're looking where they're supposed to be and um and, and you know they we've kind of condensed the field now so we've condensed everything down uh <clears throat> drizzle uh the whistle st uh, starts to drill uh, and then we usually just throw throw a ball to a returner or the H so they can start to see the blocking as well. Again, we can start off at walk through speed, half speed, and then um, and then progress to full speed if we have to. Yeah. But, um, but if you can kind of see, <clears throat> go back and you look at uh, the 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 other picture where we set up, you can see that we kind of started condensing everything. Everybody's starting to kind of cross the pass with our guards, our tackles, and now have gotten in side leverage of the person that they're supposed to block or their assignment so so it's starting to kind of condense the field we're starting to kind of understand okay this is where i have to be um as a as a blocker and, and where i have to go and, and who i should be where my eyes should be and where i should be looking all right and then uh live reps <clears throat> again we uh we only do this in the preseason or early on you know you can't get can't can't run live reps all the time yeah um but, you know, we try to uh, see what we have. Um, I'll, I'll use my own kickoff team sometimes uh, and kind of work those. And then uh, kind of as a reminder to myself, a uh, quick whistle. 
you know, you got to have a quick whistle. Um, <clears throat> you, you know, you, you don't want them to pile on, especially if it's a skilled kid that, that, that we need on offense or defense. You know, we don't want them just everybody diving in there and piling on. You know, he gets wrapped up, maybe two guys are on him. You know, let's blow the whistle and, and kind of get out of there. But um, <clears throat> this, is a, this is a quick clip, you know, that I have um, that uh, – it's not the greatest in the world. Uh, it's hard to get good film on kickoff return, uh, but you kind of <laughs> see it. Um, this guy right here, where if you can see this guy right here, he is our left guard. So you can kind of see that he has, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it, Coach? Yeah, I got it. All right, so he's our left guard. He's crossed the path. Um, our right guard is here. He's kind of just, uh, just out of the shot. This is our point guy. All right, and these are our two wings right here. All right, so you can kind of start to see they've, they've started setting up where they need to get inside. Um, you know, we'll, I'll run the clip. It's not a great clip, but you can kind of see, okay, they've crossed paths. He's inside here. He's inside here. We got inside of the, the wings. All right, my H is going to pick his guy up here. All right, uh, we don't do a good job as a return unit, uh, return and, and, and so forth. Um, and I, I'll kind of run the clip a little bit more here and you kind of see what I'm talking about, but all right. So the whole idea is a middle return. I have to tell these guys, middle return, middle return, middle return. Don't quit. You know, everybody thinks they're an athlete. They're going to outrun the, you know, coverage team or whatever. Um, but the way we drew this up, middle return, you'll see, I'll, I think I end up drawing a line here, but you'll see we've got cross blocked here. We picked up our inside block there. Look at the alley right there. There's our lane. Sorry. There's our lane right there. I mean, if if our returner, I know he sees a lot of grass out here. You know, he thinks uh, there's a lot of grass to the sideline. And, you know, our best athletes in high school, they think, well, if I just get to the sideline and get up the sideline, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, but <clears throat> if he sticks with his blocks, if he follows his blocks and follows the team and follows what we have, it opens up right here in the middle. Uh, this is just one example. It's not um, not the only one I had this year, but it's hard to get good film on kickoff return team um, if you're not all the way zoomed out. So, um, but but as you can see right there, every you know we got cross blocks, got our cross blocks right here, got our point man inside here with our wings, and if we follow if you follow the blocks, there's the lane that's going to open up right in here so so again it, it works for us um you know uh if you have the time to teach it i feel like it's it's a little bit easier for the kids and um you know it, it's just something that that can be taught quickly and it and doesn't have to be changed every week or anything like that so do you have any um problems with like twists um and other like movements by the kickoff team if they twist any guys lanes and stuff uh, I haven't had anything like that. Um, we we play in a uh, a two A classification, um, and so a lot of times it's uh, stay in your lane type kickoff team. Um, you know, it, uh, you know, they're just taught, hey, stay in your lane, lane integrity. Um, you know, sometimes you'll get it where they'll kind of stack, or you'll get somebody, and you know. I, I try not to make too much of it um, because I want my kids to just play fast. And, you know, all I tell them is get inside, get your hip, get your hands on the inside hips and, you know, do your job. And, you know, that's kind of what we're looking, you know, what we're looking to do, what we're trying to do there. So. Okay. Um, and then, my other question is, do you find that you spent, I mean, you mentioned doing some practice time during the season if your lane integrity is not, lanes are not good and picking up people. Um, but do you find that you spend majority of your drill time in the summer, in the preseason, and it kind of wanes off as the season goes on? Yeah, of course. I mean, you, you know, uh, if you're doing good things on special teams, uh, it's an easy thing to kind of cut time from. <clears throat> um, you know, and so we do a lot, you know, we're, we're, I focus a lot in the, in the off season or in the preseason, uh, talking about it, getting it in, um, 
first couple weeks, you know, might be pretty heavy. Um, I might be begging for time. I might be like, Hey man, we need to get in here. We got to get, we got to get, I got to get some extra time, you know? Um, but as the season goes, you know, we're, we're going to wean off some of that stuff. Um, I might, you know, if something's different for the opponent, we might put it in, um, you know, it might be a point of emphasis for the week. Hey, I, this is where I think we can win at. So we just, um, you know, we, we, you know, it just all depends, but yeah, a lot of that drill work is going to be done in the preseason. Um, <clears throat> maybe first couple weeks of the, of the, of the season. And then after that, it's, it kind of weans off and we get into more, you know, making adjustments and game planning. Yeah. Okay, coach. Um, coaches, please, um, make sure if you want to reach out to coach, um, follow him on Twitter, send him an email. Um, if you are watching the video portion, obviously that's on the screen. Um, if you are listening on the one of the apps, Anchor, uh, Spotify, so forth, uh, it'll be in the bio as well. Um, so please reach out to Coach. Um, Coach does some good stuff, and Coach is willing to talk the other stuff he, they do down there. Um, and again, thank you. And this was another episode of the Kick and Cover podcast.